Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP Certified Instructor. In this video we're covering CCNA Semester 3, Scaling Networks, and this is Chapter 4, Wireless LAN. We move into Section 4.4, Wireless LAN Configuration. Most home wireless routers are ready for service out of the box. They do not require any additional configuration. You can use them, you can start using them, but wireless router default IP address username and passwords can easily be found on the internet. All you have to do is go to the search uh, in Chrome or whatever browser you're using and put search phrase default wireless router IP address or default wireless router password to see a listing of many websites that provide this information. Therefore, your first priority should be to change these defaults for security reasons. Internet connection. The IP address assigned for the internet connecting is normally set up by ISP throughout the DHCP. So you don't you can't change anything there. DHCP settings. Wireless routers come with the DHCP already configured for the WLAN and LAN connection. So your router, your wireless router or access point, it will be issuing uh, IP addresses to your client machine through DHCP, either for wireless clients or just regular normal wired clients. SSID name, the name of the WLAN network will be set to default, which should be changed. WLAN security out of the box, home wireless router will have no encryption and no security password. The WLAN will be open. And management access, the default password to access any brand of wireless routers are readily available on the internet. Therefore, the password should be changed to prevent unauthorized access. A wireless router has several ports to connect to the wired uh, devices. So for example, usually you have like this, four ports, so at the back, Ethernet ports, so you can connect the wired devices. The Internet ports on the Internet, the Internet port is the Ethernet port that is used to connect to the router to a service wired device such as DSL or cable modem. Here, for example, if you connect the, to the cable modem, we will have the Ethernet ports. If we have a DSL straight to the phone line, it's usually RJ. 11 port rather than our Ethernet port is RJ45. So it's a bit smaller than the Ethernet port. In UK, I'm talking about. The steps to connect the wireless router to a broadband modem port are as follows. Step one, on the router, connect the straight through Ethernet cable to the port labeled Internet. This port may also be labeled WAN, W-N-A-N. Step two, on the service provider broadband modem, connect the other end of the uh, cable to the appropriate port. Typically labeled for this port are Ethernet, Internet, or, or one. Step three, turn on the broadband modem and plug in the power cord to the router. After the modem establishes a connection to the ISP, it will begin communicating with the router. The router internet LED will light up, indicating communication. To gain access to the wireless router configuration, graphical user interface, open a web browser. In the address field, enter the default private IP address of your wireless router. So we'll put the address there. Usually, this address will be found on the documentation that came with the wireless router, or you can search on the internet. Usually it's 192.168.0.1. It's common of default for some manufacturers. So you put 192.168.0.1 there, this window will pop up, authentication window. Now, security window prompt for authorization to access the router, graphical user interface. Usually, here we have the username is admin and the password is admin. Again, we can check the, the router's documentation or we can just search on the internet and find out what's the defaults. Configure an IP address in a small, in a home or small office network, you would normally leave the internet connection set to automatic. After the configuration is saved, you will lose connectivity to the wireless router. To regain access, renew your IP address then enter the new IP address 101001 in the field. So if you change the address, the local address, not the internet address, the local address, because the, your wireless router will have two addresses. One, from the internet, it gets it from DHCP, from ISP, and now the one that you can configure. Instead of that private address, it was 192.168.0.1, we put 10.10.10.1. But now we will lose the connection to the router, so we have to open a new browser, a new window, and put 10, 10, 10, 1 now. After establishing the connection to the router, it's good practice to configure some basic setting to help secure a wireless network. 
So first, we can change the network mode. Some wireless router allow to select which 802.11 standard to implement. Change the name, change the network name, SSID, assign the SSID to the wireless network. And we choose a channel. So 802.11b and 802.11g standard commonly use channel 1, 6 and 11 to avoid interference. And then we choose the security. So configure the strongest security mode, which is WPA with AES encryption. Although we change the management address to access the router to 10, 10, 10, 1, the password is still set to the default. You change the administrative password in the administration tab. At the bottom of the, of the same administration tab, you use the button, button to backup and restore the configuration. When an access point or wireless router has been configured, test wireless connectivity to configure a wireless uh, uh, client to access the WLAN. Verify the client has successfully connected to the correct wireless network, especially because there might be many WLAN available which to connect. To troubleshooting approaches, troubleshooting any sort of network problem should follow the systematic approach. Logical network models, such as the OSI and TCP IP models, separate network functionality into modular layers. There are three main troubleshooting approaches used to resolve network problems. We have bottom-up, or we start at layer 1, and we work in troubleshooting up the layers. Top-down, we start at the top, at the, the top layer, and then we work downwards. Or the best one, with a bit more experience, you move on to divide and conquer. Ping the destination. If the ping fails, verify the lower layers. If the ping is successful, verify the upper layers. So, for example, we start here with the ping. If the ping fails, then we look at these layers. If the ping works, then we look at the top layers. Wireless client not connecting when troubleshooting a WLAN, a process of elimination is recommended. Check the following. Confirm the network configuration of the PC using ipconfig command. Verify the PC has received an IP address via DHCP or is configured with a static IP address. Confirm that the device can connect to the wired network, so we should try and connect it, the device to the wired network and ping everything that we can see that we can ping it. If necessary, reload the driver as appropriate for the client. It may be necessary to try a different wireless NIC. If the wireless network interface card of the client is working, check the security mode and encryption settings on the client. If the security settings do not match, the client cannot gain access to WLAN. If the PC is operational, but the wireless connection is performing poorly, we need to check the following. How far is the PC from access point? Is the PC out of the planned coverage area, PSA, basic service area? Check the channel setting on the wireless clients. The client software should detect and the appropriate channel as long as SSID is correct. Check the, for the presence of other devices in the area that might be interfering with the 2.4 GHz band. Examples we have is cordless phone, baby monitor, microwave ovens, big trouble, wireless security system and potentially rogue access points. To optimize and increase the bandwidth of 802.11n AC dual band router, either upgrade your wireless client, older 802.11b and even 802.11g devices can slow the entire WLAN. For the best performance, all wireless devices should support the same highest acceptable standard. Or what we can do is we can split the traffic. The easiest way to improve wireless performance is to split the wireless traffic between 802.11n, 2.4GHz and 5GHz band. Therefore, 802.11n or better can use the two band as a two separate wireless network to help manage the traffic. For example, use a 2.4 GHz network for basic internet tasks such as web browsing, email and downloads and the 5 GHz band for the streaming multimedia. Updating firmware. Most wireless routers offer upgradable firmware. Firmware re releases may contain fixes for common problems reported by customers as well as security vulnerabilities. You should periodically check the manufacturer website for updated firmware. After it is downloaded, you can use a GUI to upload the firmware to the wireless router. Users will be disconnected from the WLAN 
and the internet until the upgrade finishes. The wireless router might need to reboot several times before no normal network operations are restored. Ok, thank you for watching, please have a look at other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been a Street Press Nishi.